Warzone Next Generation. PlayStation 5's, Xbox Series X's, they're out there and in the wild, players have them, of course, and you can play Warzone on them, but not in a truly dedicated next generation fashion. So the question then will start to come out. Will Warzone have anything done to it to make it truly compatible with next generation, to be a truly next gen experience? Now, that's what I hope to discuss here and maybe examine a little further with you as we go along. So let me know your thoughts down below. Do you think that Warzone will be getting a truly next generation ver- Do you think that Warzone will truly be getting a next gen update of some kind here, utilizing all the hardware and tech at the new console disposal, or maybe not so? So much. Whatever it is, feel free to let me know in the comments. But as well, if you are new to the channel, do be sure that subscribe button or on the road to 400,000 subscribers, and we'll keep the date with all things Warzone, Cold War, and anything COD related. So if you're interested in joining the community, I'd love to have you. That said, let's talk about the prospect of Warzone Next Generation. So let's start at the beginning. Point being, Warzone is absolutely playable on next generation consoles already. Well, Kind of. Maybe put an asterisk on that, we'll get to that in a second. Right before the launch of Cold War, Sony was kind enough to send me a console that has allowed me to play Warzone, Cold War, and other games on the next generation settings. Heck, I played Cold War's campaign a few times on PS5 already, back when I was grinding Dark Ops challenges at the very beginning of the year with the launch. I probably played Cold War's campaign like six to eight times now at this point, doing challenges across various platforms, because some challenges don't transfer from platform to platform. Perfect example being Dark Ops challenges. I did them all on PC for the campaign initially, then whenever I went over to my new PC, they weren't there. Same thing with PS5, they weren't there. So started doing them on PC, on PS5, and elsewhere. But getting back to the point of Warzone in particular, you can go on those platforms and play Warzone how you'd like to. Some experiences being a little bit more next generation than the other. But when you take a look at things like, say, on PlayStation 5, the options for the game, that's where you go in, and it's not really anything out of the ordinary. You're met with your basic functions, your controller settings, your general settings, your audio, and your account settings. And for the most part, you may be used to this. And nothing may seem out of the ordinary. But if you compare that to, say, the PC settings, you're missing out on an entire graphics tab, which at first glance, okay, maybe that's just resolution, right? To which case, if you have a 4K monitor, yeah, it'll output naturally to 4K, and same with a 1080p monitor, it'll automatically output to 1080p. But this is where the next generation items are usually housed that you have zero access to. Things like ray tracing and DLSS tech, texture quality, and things like that, nothing is customizable on the PlayStation 5 side of things, despite those being items that were advertised with the PlayStation 5 and its launch. Another big piece of missing tech, 120 FPS, which is a big selling point for the next generation consoles for many. Now, strangely, I do know that Xbox Series X actually can output at 120 Hertz and 120 FPS, sometimes dipping down to around 100. I think Digital Foundry ended up finding that that was the common low value here when outputted like that. So it's not a constant locked 120 like COD normally is at 60 FPS, but you can absolutely manage 120 Hertz on Xbox. Xbox Series X by simply going to your console settings and you'll natively output through Warzone. So in some capacity, you do get a little bit of a next-gen experience here with this, but only on one platform. But even stranger than one system offering 120 FPS while the other does not, is that you have these settings and these options that we've discussed natively built into Cold War, with 120 FPS even being possible on Cold War on PS5, albeit kind of in an annoying fashion that you have to disable ray tracing, then go into your system settings, and this is then all assuming that you have a monitor that supports 120 plus hertz, which really is step one. Another big piece of that next generation puzzle that Cold War interestingly has, which neither PS5 nor Xbox Series X has, in Warzone is a native FOV slider, something players have been asking for for years, and especially now with the inclusion of crossplay being a regular within Call of Duty. It's actually an advantage that PC players do have over console. A base FOV of 80 may seem like enough, but whenever you jump on a PC and you compare that with the possibilities of 100, 110, 120 FOV, it's quite a difference in that peripheral vision when it's almost doubled. A ton more that a PC player can see over compared to, say, a console player. For ages, it was believed that we wouldn't be seeing an FOV slider on consoles, and the rumor was for a long while because of hardware limitations. So perhaps because of the new hardware, we did see this introduced into Cold War in both current and next generation versions, but it doesn't seem to transfer to Warzone, at least not yet. Now, the logical explanation for this, perhaps, is that Modern Warfare has not been given a proper PS5 version and possibly won't get one. Xbox Series X is kind of that weird gap console where it's not right now fully using all of those next generation pieces that we may have thought would be coming, but the PlayStation 5 definitely doesn't have any of them. 
So for the sake of discussing the very basis here of this, the fact that right now PS5 doesn't have anything that points towards a next generation variation, I wanna talk from that perspective in just a little bit. PlayStation 5 right now is missing that one key selling point of 120 FPS on next generation consoles, and then other things in the tech like ray tracing and such, because you're not playing on a proper PS5 version. It's the PS4 Pro version of the game that's being considered a backwards compatible application to the PlayStation 5, thus not giving you access to those hardware upgrades and cool new features. Now, this would be able to explain why from one active game to the next, it's different. Cold War has a PS5 application, naturally since the game was launched right alongside PS5 and Xbox Series X consoles. But for previous generation games, it's usually unheard of that these games are continued on and supported as if it's day one, at least in the COD franchise. So Warzone's this curveball that's tethered to this application of a game that's predating the new consoles, meaning that unlike other COD games in the past and a lot of other games in general at platform and generational shifts, this game is still being supported regularly, which poses the question in the first place. So unless Warzone becomes its own application, a standalone item disassociated with Modern Warfare, to the point where Modern Warfare and Cold War then launch you to an entirely different application, like you can now from current cross-menu systems, will we be limited to the air quote PS4 Pro version of the game? Is that next step to giving us a next generation update to purge Warzone from Modern Warfare instead, make it its own standalone application? And also that'd be an interesting future proofing mechanism that may need to inevitably come as well. I mean, are they going to keep Modern Warfare alive once Infinity Ward's next title comes out? Or if it really does turn out that Sledgehammer is rumored to be making the upcoming 2021 project this fall, would they keep Modern Warfare alive for that? Would they really still use Modern Warfare 2019 as that base for the entire landing piece of Warzone? Or would they be better off having that unifying piece as its own hub, its own application, with each game separate and being its own landing piece with bridges of cross launch and progression, tying them all together. My guess would kind of be on the ladder there with that. And if given its own application, that means that we'd finally be able to see a true next generation application developed for these consoles of PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X, or at least in theory. If we have a game that's built to be standing the test of time, like Warzone seems to be, it needs to be future-proofed. Playing a backwards compatible version of a game may suffice now, but if Activision truly is looking to make a game a long-standing connection between multiple upcoming projects as the years go on, a PS4 Pro version will soon become an obsolete version of the game. If it doesn't adapt to the tool set of the next generation consoles, it's likely gonna die off. So my curiosity then turns to the idea that maybe this happens sometime in the near future, perhaps around that one year mark for Warzone that we start seeing some disassociating. Maybe we see at that one year mark, it finally becomes its own thing, its own standalone game and title. Or maybe not, maybe just an update comes at some later point. To which if that's the case, when would we see it? Unfortunately, there is no real solid answer and that's the big question mark. Perhaps we see it at that one year mark, perhaps later on down the line. But the big question comes down to the investment in it of itself, obviously. Naturally, we'll end up seeing next generation consoles become the new norm, but it might take two to three years before the Xbox One and PS4s are finally fully phased out, at which point, of course, we'd have a next gen version of Warzone if it's still around. But if that's the worst case scenario, I'd imagine it's somewhere within the next year, kind of falling in the middle, as much as a cop out as that may sound. If it wasn't launched with the consoles, the demand will be ever increasing as a product is made more available. As more people get PlayStation 5s, Xbox Series X consoles, people are going to be wanting to play Warzone in its next generation format. So while right now it may not pose the biggest necessity to Activision to develop a version here for next generation consoles, it soon likely will. When will we fully be able to take advantage of the next generation hardware and upgrades for Warzone? That's the big question, but hopefully soon. But that said, I think that's where we're going to wrap it up. Just wanted to casually discuss here what the prospect of a next generation Warzone would look like. So let me know your thoughts down below. Have you played on Xbox Series X, perhaps 120 FPS in terms of Warzone? Do you like it? I truly think that 60 to 120 to anything upwards is a life-changing experience if you're a gamer. It is just so much more fluid, so much nicer. So let me know your thoughts. Have you played on 120 plus Hertz FPS? Or are you hoping for a Warzone next generation update here sometime in the near future? Let me know your thoughts and feedback down there in the comment section down below, but hopefully enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to drop a like down below, and of course, if you're new to the channel, make sure you guys subscribe so you don't miss a single thing regarding all things Warzone, Cold War, and anything COD related. So if you want to stay up to date with all of that, make sure you hit the subscribe button. If you also want to follow me on Twitter and Instagram, those are the best places to get connected outside of YouTube. Break live on both those. If you guys want to strike up a conversation, ask me a question, whatever it may be, that link is down there in the description below. That said, thanks so much for watching. My name is Espresso. I'll see you guys later. Take care and peace.